How does a defense contractor with no experience making electric vehicles win the largest electric vehicle contract ever? And even crazier, how does this defense contractor convince the USPS to give them billions of dollars to develop a custom made delivery van only to then have the USPS buy regular old off the shelf vans instead of their custom one? It's because of this dude right here and because of our old friends greed, corruption, and of course, dirty politics. In the latest update that is the USPS next-gen delivery vehicle Trump, Biden, DeJoy scandal, they've decided to buy a bunch of quote, commercial off-the-shelf EVs to supplement their order from Oshkosh Defense. Put simply, while the USPS has paid billions of dollars for custom-made vehicles from Oshkosh Defense, they're still buying the majority of their electric vans from a random third-party supplier. The federal government also owns an enormous fleet of vehicles, which we're gonna replace with clean electric vehicles made right here in America by American workers, creating millions of jobs, a million auto worker jobs. And before, the USPS and DeJoy were saying that they couldn't afford to buy more EVs because they were too expensive. They said it would cost an extra $3 billion to go 100% electric. But now we know that was complete bullshit because Congress has now allocated an extra $3 billion to the USPS and they're still not going all electric. Really what this is proving is what we already knew to be true. Oshkosh said that, quote, the vehicles will be equipped with either fuel efficient internal combustion engines or battery electric powertrains and can be retrofitted to keep pace with advances in electric vehicle technologies, which sounds great. But when they said that, they hadn't even built a prototype with those capabilities. They were just giving lip service to the USPS and telling them what they knew they wanted to hear. Oshkosh knew that would be an incredible selling point, so they said they'd do it, but now it's come time to actually deliver, and they can't. And here's the proof. These are the actual latest van delivery numbers for the USPS. The USPS was ordering 50,000 vans, of which 20% were supposed to be electric. Because they've gotten so much pressure to actually electrify their fleet instead of just making excuses, they've now added 34,500 off the shelf EVs to that 50,000 original for a grand total of 84,500 vehicles. And here's where we find out the truth about the USPS themselves. According to their latest announcement, in total of the above 84,500 next-gen delivery vehicles and COTS vehicles, the Postal Service anticipates having at least 40% battery electric vehicle. Like we talked about earlier, 34,500 of these are off-the-shelf electric vans, and they say they're expecting at least 40% to be electric. But hold up a second, if we do some quick math, 40% of 84,500 is 34,500, which means all they're saying is that the off-the-shelf electric vans will be electric and the purpose-built custom design vans from Oshkosh Defense don't have any pressure to be electric at all because they're already hitting their electric numbers with the off-the-shelf electric vans. That is absolutely insane. They've custom ordered these vans with a huge focus on them being electric and what it looks like is that defense contractor Oshkosh is going to be delivering next to no EVs. And while before the USPS was just saying that they didn't have the budget for it, now they can't say that because Congress has given them the amount of money they said they needed, yet they're still only doing at least 40% electric. And to be clear, I don't think they need to do 100% EVs. They should probably do more like 90 to 95% electric and leave the really awkward routes to gas powered vehicles while electric vehicles continue to improve. But that's really not the point. Also, they don't say which off the shelf electric vans they're going to use, but my guess is it's either going to be Ford's electric transit vans or workhorse or even maybe both. There really aren't very many companies making electric vans, so they don't have that many options. But the USPS chose Oshkosh as the manufacturer of their NGDV, and that was clearly a mistake. Even before they'd chosen Oshkosh to build their EVs, the defense contractor disclosed this to the SEC. 
we may not have the expertise or resources to successfully address these pressures on a cost-effective basis or at all. While we are continuing to explore options to offer more propulsion choices in our products, such as electric powered vehicles or mobile equipment with lower emissions, this may require us to spend additional funds on product research and development and implementation costs and subject us to the risk that our competitors may respond to these pressures in a manner that gives them the competitive edge. Let me sum that up for you. When asked by the federal government if they could make cost-effective electric vehicles for the federal fleet, Oshkosh said, uh, no. And the federal government, while knowing that Oshkosh themselves said they weren't up for the task of creating electric vehicles, they still awarded them the USPS contract. And then just think of how many compromises were made to create a vehicle that could be gas powered, but then be retrofitted to be converted over to electric. If you know EVs, you know that while gas cars and EVs might look similar on the outside, their constraints and needs are totally different. And if you optimize for one, you create inefficiencies in the other. For example, gas vehicles need a large engine compartment to house the gas motor, usually at the front under the hood. EVs don't need that space, so you could make a van with a really short hood and an overall shorter footprint, which would be a benefit. But if your design has to work with both, you don't get to use a short hood and overall more compact van. On the flip side, EVs have large, heavy battery packs usually housed in the bottom of the vehicle to keep the weight low, which obviously gas vehicles don't have. Now, those battery packs, while heavy, are usually integrated into the chassis to make it more rigid and to add structural support. But if you're building a chassis that has to be able to do both, it has to be fully structurally sound without the battery packs, which means if you retrofit the packs in, the vehicles will be unnecessarily heavy and inefficient. And it's not just me saying this, we've had countless examples of Legacy Auto trying this exact experiment because designing an entirely new chassis and vehicle is expensive. So many of the Legacy Auto manufacturers have just tried to retrofit gas vehicles to EVs and try selling those and it's always gone horribly. And even if you design something to be both gas and electric like BMW did with the i3, which can be fully electric, but it can also come with a gas engine, it really doesn't work. The i3 has a pretty terrible 150 mile max range, it's slow, and it's comparably really expensive for what you get. The fact of the matter is, both platforms have their advantages and disadvantages, but you can't optimize for both at the same time. If you optimize for a gas engine, you make a worse EV, and if you optimize for electric, you make a worse gas vehicle. This isn't to say you can't make a platform that is capable of both electric and gas, it's been done, but it is to say what you end up with is the worst of both worlds. And maybe that would be worth it because they wanted to have all of the same type of vehicle from the same company. But now what they're doing is buying the majority of their EVs from a random third party supplier and then still having Oshkosh build both electric and gas vehicles. It is unbelievably inefficient. And I believe the reason that Oshkosh was given the contract was pure corruption. Plain and simple, there were so many shady things going on behind the scenes with regards to DeJoy and how he owns personal stock in a company directly tied to Oshkosh, but that's a video for a different time. What this is proving is that the USPS was bullshit and they said they couldn't go fully electric because of their budget because now they've been giving the amount of money that they said they would need and they still aren't going full electric. They thought they'd be able to get away with just saying they didn't have the budget so then they could give their contract to their military defense buddies at Oshkosh who have no idea how to build EVs, but it wouldn't matter because they weren't going to build EVs anyway. And now that the USPS is being pressured to make Oshkosh actually build the EVs, they're just outsourcing it to a completely different company, presumably because Oshkosh cannot make EVs in a cost-effective way, just like they said to the SEC. Meaning the USPS paid billions to have Oshkosh design and prototype a gas and electric van, but because Oshkosh either can't make them or can't make them in a cost-effective manner, the USPS is still having to go with somebody else. It's such a ridiculous waste of money, it's almost hard to imagine, although it is the government after all. And to make matters even worse, Oshkosh's custom-made gas vans are absolutely terrible. They're replacing vans that are over 30 years old, they're from the Reagan administration, and yet, these brand new, incredibly expensive vans 
only have improved their miles per gallon by 0.4. Not 4, not 40, but 0.4. That gives them 8.6 miles per gallon with the AC running. And I looked up if it was normal because I don't know that much about delivery vans of that size. But no, the Ford Transit van, which is roughly the same size, gets about double that. This entire situation is a colossal failure and a waste of billions of dollars. That being said, it's given us a look into the level of corruption that's happening at the federal level, and because we can see it, we can try and fix it. If you want more info on why criminal charges should be brought against DeJoy, check out this video that I made that's talking exactly about that. If you appreciate this video where I'm trying to expose the lies and corruption in the federal government and elsewhere, consider supporting me on Patreon. I want to at least try and expose some of these corrupt things that are happening behind the scenes, and your support helps me keep doing just that. If you found this video insightful, feel free to share it with someone that you think would find it interesting. It would really help out the channel. I want as many people as possible to hear about this corruption, and I need help getting this information spread. As always, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for allowing me to continue to make videos like this one. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to do it. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Peace.